All right, everybody, good evening. And um, we're gonna have some fun. I know that everybody here is absolutely convinced uh, of the need to make your communities, you know, not just safe and efficient and you know, nicely plowed streets and nicely filled potholes, but an interesting place where people wanna live. That, that is really, truly a critical part of what you do every day, even though, you know, it, it, sometimes people like, you know, Mayor Olson and Franklin were just a little bit too, you know, kind of tightly wrapped to admit it, but placemaking is what it's all about. All right. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna pay for that one. For a long time, the League has been a passionate, proud, and just very happy partner with Arts Wisconsin. And I'm going to introduce the incomparable Ann Katz. Was incomparable the word you wanted to use? Possibly another word you could use, but... Wait, you want to talk about the Mayor's Arts Council? That's the whole thing. Well, I'm not there. I'm, it's part of my shtick. I'm ad limited it up here, Ann. Incomparable is good. Incomparable is good. But before we get to the incomparable Ann Katz, there are three mayors that are kind of dotted along central Wisconsin that are doing something kind of out of the blue and a really cool idea. Essentially, they came up with, I don't know what you call it, the Mayor's Arts Challenge. So from Rhinelander, I want to have uh, Mayor Chris Fredrickson come up here. Hobble on up here, Chris. Come on, the governor did it. The governor did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> Chris the city of Rhinelander talk about, just, it's not a program, it's just a cool idea they came up with. So yeah, um, one of the things that, uh, make us powerful as mayors is the fact that we're vulnerable. We put, we put ourselves out there in front of people. So using art to propel both economy and politics and policy, um, the way we can support each other, and one, one of the things that really, really, really draws you to Green Bay or to somewhere else is the beauty of it. So what catches the eye? So <clears throat> Mayor Rosenberg had a piece of art on Twitter, and we have some followers, or, uh, followers or, Followers of hers in Rhinelander who said, Do all mayors paint? She's like, Oh, so Chris Barrett's who paints too? So I put a couple of mine out there and she's like, Oh, we should do an exchange. I said, No, we should do a challenge. She goes, I, I know we can get Mike Weasel in on this too. So we, we started with the Mayor's Art Challenge where we were each going to paint a painting, put it up for auction in our cities and, well, anywhere else that it could be. It'll be on PBS. And then whoever raised the most money then got to dictate where the money went, and we each picked a, a category. Now what this does is it puts us in front of Wisconsin as very vulnerable because we put that art out there. Trust me, it, it's hard to do. It, it's hard to do as, as a artist is to put yourself out there as that way, especially when you're not professional. It's not what you do, but saying, listen, we, we creatively problem solve to get these things done. Um, it's made us, I think, stronger as a group. I think we appreciate you, each other. <laughs> You're right. When I sat down, I made people nervous because I was going to make this short. <laughs> my piece is my advisor. I'm short. Sure it's done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, when do you auction your lot? When's the auction? I want to know when I can bid. I want the lotus flower. So the auction site is going to be up hopefully by Monday, um, and will be it'll be an online auction, so you can bid on any of them. And uh, we'll get the link out as soon as we have it, but we don't have it yet. Okay. All right, so Mayor's on the Fox. There's your challenge. You all are up next. Oh, Great yeah, Lakes yeah. Mayors, I mean, shorefront mayors, everybody. But I think the point is, and what's so cool about what the three of them have done, it is just totally ad hoc and fun and engaging. And I think that's, I would encourage all of us to do more of that. So, speaking of really cool and fun and engaging and amazing stuff, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ann Katz from Arts Wisconsin. How do I top that? That is the question. Um, thank you, Jerry, and um, thank you, mayors, for your incredible creativity. That is what we are always trying to encourage. So um, you are, the, the gauntlet has been thrown, the glove has been thrown down, whatever you want to say. And I hope that you um, all make this a, a priority. Uh, so as Jerry said, I'm Ann Katz, I'm Director of Arts Wisconsin. We're the state's community cultural development organization. 
Um, we are all about ensuring access to the arts, culture, and creativity for everyone everywhere in the state. And we um, really are all about investment in uh, our creative economy, workforce, communities, and people for the good of your communities and for all of Wisconsin. I want to note that we have two board members here today. Christopher Nauman is an architect from Green Bay on our board, and Zach Brewing, is he here? He's everywhere. Uh, <laughs> he's everywhere, but he's not in this room. He is also a, a board member, a former mayor of Wisconsin Rapids, current city administrator in Rhinelander, and a former uh, award uh, honor, honoree of uh, this community, uh, Creative Community Champions Award. Um, I stumbled over that because this is the first year we've been calling it the Creative Community Champions Award. It used to be called the Arts in the Community Award, but um, since we are um, expanding our work to really focus on the creative spirit that lives in all of us and makes us human and the creativity that you all have in your communities, um, we decided to change the name and really make it about Creative Champions. Um, this is the 13th year we have partnered with the League to do these awards, and they're all about honoring civic leaders who support the creative assets, again, people, organizations, and businesses and programs in their communities. Um, I thank you to the board of directors of, uh, of the League and to Jerry and his wonderful staff for um, being such great partners. We, we do always have a good time. Pretty much I say to Jerry and Gail, what do you think, should we do this? And they say, oh yeah, that, sure, that sounds good. So that's great. Um, this year we are uh, honoring Wisconsin's Municipal Poets Laureate, and that's how you say it, and writers and residents. So Poets Laureate, not Poet Laureates. Um, when I started the process of researching the number of Poets Laureate in the state, I uh, found eight, well I found seven plus a writer and residents. Um, uh, I then learned that uh, just on Monday that the city of Bayfield also has a, a, poets, a poet laureate. You do? Oh shoot. Well now I know that Stevens Point does too. Let's talk about that. How come nobody told me? How come Greg didn't tell me? Um, so there are, uh, and then the, today I found out that Oshkosh has one and Stevens Point as well. So there are 11 as far as I know. I'm going to probably learn more by the end of the day. Um, there are 11 poets laureate um, in, and writers and residents in the state. I will say their names. Uh, Lemoyne McLaughlin, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Amory. Lucy Terrell, who's Poet Laureate of the City of Bay Bayfield. Ken Sesmansky, who is Writer in Residence, the um, City of Eau Claire. Joseph Engel, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Kenosha. Angela Trudell Vasquez, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Madison. Dasha Kelly Hamilton, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Milwaukee, and also Wisconsin Poet Laureate. Deborah Hall, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Racine, Lisa Vijos, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Sheboygan, Dawn Anderson, who is Poet Laureate of the City of Wausau, and Oshkosh is um, Thomas Cannon, who is the city of, uh, city of Oshkosh. And who is the Stevens Point? John Gabois. John Gabois is the Stevens Point um, uh, Poet Laureate. So we have six of our Poets Laureate and Writers in Residence here today, and I'd like them to stand up so that you can all give them a round of applause. And you will be hearing from them, from each of them in a minute. Um, I just want to say that Poets Laureate and Writers in Residence are officially appointed by municipalities to be ambassadors of poetry, literature, and storytelling, leading community-centered projects for and with uh, local residents. Establishing a Community Poet Laureate program provides opportunities for greater appreciation of the art form and literary works in general and recognizes the place that poetry and words have in a community's cultural tradition and civic life. By the way, any community of any size can establish a Poet Laureate or a Writer in Residence program. Um, the city of Bayfield, the city of Milwaukee, and everything in between which is what we have already. So if you're interested, let's talk. Um, I'll be around after the, for the reception, and um, it's artswisconsin.org. You can get in touch with me at any time. I've already talked to several local officials today about establishing a, um, a program. I'd also like to thank the municipal leaders who um, make this, these kinds of programs uh, happen in their communities. 
We really appreciate their commitment to supporting the position as part of the fabric of their community. So these are the ones that I know are here today. So Mayor Rosenberg from Wausau, uh, Mayor Riza from Stevens Point, um, Mayor Palmieri from Oshkosh, I don't know if she's here, and Mayor Sorensen from Sheboygan. There he is. So thank you. Let's. Um, I think the best way to honor these, um, these, writer, these poets and writers is to hear their words. So um, I'm going to call each of them up uh, going by order of community, um, and you will hear from each of them. So Ken, you are first. I'm Ken Szymanski, but great to be here in Title Town uh, representing Great city of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm going to read a three minute non fiction piece from my book, Home Field Advantage. It's called Thick as Thieves. We had nothing to lose. We were four UW Eau Claire guys living on Water Street, sharing a friendly rivalry with four female students who lived a block away on Menominee Street. One evening, bored, some of us went over there and yelled, Hello? as we entered the house. No one answered. No one home. This left an opening for some harmless fun. What should we take, one of us asked. We quickly considered possibilities. Their silverware, light bulbs. Then someone said, let's take the couch. The idea was so ridiculous that we immediately took action. Each of us grabbed a corner and together we stuffed the couch through the front door while barking contradictory commands, laughing, and occasionally dropping a corner. Once outside, the four of us speed waddled the couch down the street. Despite the enormous contraband, we tried to look inconspicuous. Looking down, avoiding eye contact with neighbors, taking the alley. We finally collapsed with it in our backyard, then worked on the next phase of the plan. They'll come straight for our house looking for it, one of us said. We tossed around ideas, needing to do something before they got home. The basement? Someone's room? A couch simply cannot be hidden. Then someone said, the neighbors. Some guys who played baseball for the Eau Claire Cavaliers live next door. Their living room consisted of a TV and some lawn chairs. Perfect. The Cavalier guys weren't home, and apparently people in this neighborhood never locked their houses. So we charged the couch in like a battering ram, set it against the empty wall in their living room, and ran home. A short time later, we heard the women stomping up our porch steps. At casual, someone said, as we sat watching TV. <laughs> okay, where is it? One of them demanded. Where's what? One of us asked. You know exactly what we're talking about. Where is the couch? <laughs> what? You lost your couch? <laughs> we know you took it, they said, and rummaged from room to room. As they marched upstairs, one of us yelled, do you remember where you left it last? <laughs> the rest of us muffled their laughter. When they realized it wasn't in our house and we were enjoying this way too much, they stormed away. A couple of angry days passed. The act eventually wore thin and we finally led them to the Cavaliers living room. Those guys, lounging on the couch and watching TV, looked disappointed to see it go. <laughs> The feud between the houses turned out to be a clumsy, thinly veiled form of flirtation. One of the guys from our house and a woman from their house eventually got married. Now they own rental properties together. They live in a two-story home with a comfortable leather couch. It's funny how adulthood slides into place, like the easy turn of a high-quality deadbolt lock. <laughs> Um, called 
holding the line. The rusty train cars are 20 empty-handed merchants, sitting silent but ready like always. Stubborn in the wind, which whips the lash of brutal howls across this iron framed picture of sleep. This ubiquitous breeze, flustered by forgotten ways of freight, tosses a bailey hat into its own mouth. Between the tracks, there's a young man casting dreams of romance and drags off his cigarette and swigs from a bottle of whiskey. He sits in light as thin as mist on a pile of books which a drifter sees with hands like flint, wide-eyed for warmth. Though someone tends to all these snoring beasts, to all this graffiti with a yawning gate and a flashlight for hope, who knows every crater on the moon by name and has taken to making up constellations. His wife is a light on at home. Excuse me. His wife is the light on at home who drinks up the wine and is used to the cold side of her bed, except nights that her burning arm binds their dog, Orion, her smoke. <laughs> Dragging into home, burnt and early, their bedroom door glares open to his red eyes full of choked out sun, of thoughts on vagrants or what might have howled down between the trains. He brings the smell of night and granite and tar which makes her more awake, coughs a bit, then, in full eclipse, begins to pull the shades. Thank you. Cornrows getting her ass kicked. 
So now my husband and I are giggling at our own ringside commentary about the party she's missed, the cleavage she's erased, the birthday cake she never ate just to get here, and still, get her ass kicked. And I thought, man, all of that sacrifice was supposed to get her something. I said it out loud. That lowercase scripture we all vowed only to mouth inside our private intentions. Okay. I know we agree not to speak of how we believe sacrifice to really be a function of getting what we want. There. I said it. We know we're not worthy sometimes, so we barter. Offer to turn out our insides in exchange for some sugar retreat. Maybe fame, power, accolades, money, or maybe just heaven. But we gotta have something. We gotta know that if we peel entitlement from our hands like badly blemished skin, that we can still cross our fingers because we're not the type of migrating creatures to bury our greed in the sand, walk away, and trust the providence of evolution. No. We're more like scavenger beasts, haunting our own dark horizon in search of bright and shiny guarantees. See, the concept of sacrifice for us mere mortals is just that. It's a concept, an idea, a thought, a fancy, a promise we like to stitch into the sky like loosely embroidered rainbows. There, I said it, and you know what this looks like. We all have the mark of human blotched across our skull, and we've all laid some easy comfort across an altar and then tried to split hairs with God, whispering for his sigil to circle mercy around our splendor, because we've got to have something to point to and polish, proving how we tend to live life training for the victory, but not preparing for the fight. And this life is just a battle that has to be survived sometimes. And we work so hard at making things easy, forcing ourselves to keep bobbing and swinging. Even when life is kicking our ass, we will stand there, just like cornrow, taking the blows, watching our own minerals explode from split skin. But we lose the lesson of that surrender, because we want to think back to a pact that we made in another man's blood and dare say, damn, all of that sacrifice supposed to get me something. Thank you very much. Alisa B. Host is Paul Laureate of the city of Sheboygan. So this poem, uh, when our new mayor, Ryan Sorensen, was elected, he asked me to write a poem for his swearing in. And I was like, I would be delighted to do that. So because this is the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, I thought this poem was especially appropriate for all of you. So it's called, If a City. If a city was a story it would begin long before streets and structures. It would begin with land and proximity to water and the people who lived there before it was a city. If a city was a poem, it would be spoken in slow, meandering lines with a litany of occurrences, triumphs, missteps, and resolutions. There would be growth and it would not always rhyme. If a city was a sentence, it would be declarative. It would have a noun, like neighbor or friend, and many verbs igniting action. Create, discover, help, flourish, dream, propose, remember. The adjectives in the city would write themselves and would be testimony to all the good works of the people who live there, thriving, generous, just, compassionate and welcoming. 
there would be no period at the end of the sentence because like a poem, the city is always unfolding towards something better. And everyone who lives in that city adds their voice to the story as a hand in its making. Thank you. Trees of the brain. 